Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we are talking summertime swim jig fishing. We're talking about the jigs, the trailers, when to throw these baits, where to throw them, how to fine tune them, some tips and tricks. We're going to cover all of it in today's video, summertime bass fishing with a swim jig. It's been a couple of years since we've done a really in-depth video about swim jig fishing. It's time for an update. Now, some of you guys might not know that years ago, I partnered up with Kurt from Dirty Jigs. We built the California swim jig. It was the first heavy wire hook swim jig to ever hit the market, the first one. We put that together years ago to fill a void because swim jig fishing was so effective out here in the West. Nobody was doing it yet, but the jigs that were on the market just would not hold up to these giant Western bass. So we built a jig that could handle it. As we went through that process, we had to fine tune a lot of things. We had to find some unique trailers, had to do things differently than they had ever been done before. And as a result, we got a really healthy understanding of swim jig fishing as a whole. So today we're specifically talking about summertime swim jig fishing. Essentially, there are three kinds of swim jigs on the market. You get your true light wire swim jigs. Then you've got a standard swim jig, and you've got a heavy wire swim jig. For today's video, we're not even gonna talk about the really finessey light wire stuff because this is summertime. Bass's metabolisms are high, they're strong, fish pull hard this time of year. So typically we're gonna lean away from the finesse end of it. We're gonna talk about those standard wire hooks on up. Now, a lot of you have probably already thrown a swim jig. Some of you haven't. Most of you have probably seen it done on TV where guys are throwing a bait out there and like shaking the rod tip like crazy while they're reeling the bait in to try and give it some action. I'm gonna be the one to tell you, you do not have to do that to fish a swim jig. In my opinion, the reason why you see guys shaking a rod tip is they have never found the right trailer, the right swim bait for the job. Once you get the right swim bait on the back of your swim jig, all of that rod shaking business is out the window. You can just throw the bait out there and reel it back. Treat it like a spinner bait, a chatter bait, a Kitek on a swim bait head, you know, just your standard swim bait. Just chuck and wind because the action of the bait is going to take care of itself and it's going to help you get bit. But again, the key is trailers. And that's where we're gonna focus most of our efforts today. So I'm only gonna really talk about two styles of swim bait. One is gonna be, not swim bait, I'm sorry, swim jig. First one is going to be a standard swim jig. Pointed nose, medium to heavy wire hook. The other is that California swim jig. Heavier weight, heavier head, much heavier hook. And it's a gaff of a hook, a very, very heavy hook designed for catching big fish. Now, it doesn't matter if you use these specific jigs or one of 50 other brands, I don't care. But I'm going to talk about these two to help you understand the concept. Then you can take this information and apply it anywhere. Now, like every video, we're gonna link all of the gear, the rods, the reels, the baits, the swim bait trailers, all of it will be linked down in the video description. So it's really easy for you to find them, zoom in on them, see pictures of the baits, all of that. So let's start with the lightest weight swim jigs and go up from there. The true lightweight swim jigs, the reason why I wanna start there is they're the easiest. You can do it all wrong and it really doesn't matter. Uh, the lighter the swim jig, the more you can get away with any trailer on the back of it. Because if you don't have a lot of weight to keel out the bait, the bait is going to destabilize and it's gonna move and it's gonna give you good action. See, the benefit of a swim jig over, say, a straight swim bait. A straight swim bait, when you reel it through the water, here's a bigger one. A straight swim bait, when you reel this through the water, you're just gonna get heavy tail kick. 
especially with a Kitek on the back like this. You get that big, wide kick, but not a ton of body roll. If you want a lot of body roll, you typically go to a hollow belly swim bait. That's where you get a lot of that rolling action, less tail kick, okay? So you get a lot of kit tail kick out of a Kitek, but it's still a very soft bait. Now, when you go to a swim jig, you're going to get all that same tail kick, all that same movement, but you're also going to get secondary action or secondary movement. Secondary movement is what sets the real thing apart from an artificial lure. So, a crankbait comes through the water and it vibrates. That's primary action. A swim bait comes through the water and the tail kicks. That's primary action. A real fish comes through the water. His tail's kicking, gills are moving, scales are flashing. There's all this other activity going on. That other activity, that's what shows life. That's what shows the real thing up against an artificial bait. So a swim bait does an amazing job of imitating some of that life, but you lose that secondary action that really puts it over the top. Back to the swim jig, that is where the skirt comes into play. So you've got a tail back here kicking, but then you've got a skirt, if you do this right, that is pulsing and moving and flowing. It's flashing light, it's giving movement, it's imitating the fins, the scale flash, all those other things. And also you will get destabilization if you do it right. And that skirt's rolling and gives you even more movement. That is when the fish come unglued because you start to bridge that gap between an artificial lure and the real thing. And when they can't tell the difference, they lash out. Don't mind me sweating, by the way. It is humid here today. We are not normally humid in the West. We are humid right now. So the lighter the swim jig, the less concerned you have to be with the trailer because almost any tail movement will destabilize that bait and it will give you that good rock and roll. So something like a little dipper or a skinny dipper or a 3.3 Kitek or a 3.8 Kitek, all those different baits are going to give you enough movement to get that bait going and those fish will come unglued. Now, as you go up in weight on your jig, this is where it starts to get complicated. That's where you start seeing guys who don't understand the concept fully shaking that rod or doing other things to try and give that bait secondary action. They know that it needs the action to get bit. They may or may not know that they can make a trailer change to get it. So as we go up in size, say to a 3 8 or a half ounce, what do you do? Well, a lot of times I throw a Kitek. I throw either a 3 8 or a 4.3 Kitek, put it on the back of that bait. It gives me that big wide kick, doesn't give me a lot of body roll, but it does look good and the fish will eat it. But if the fish start to get picky, then I take more time. The reason I'm typically throwing a Kitek is I keep an entire tub of them in my boat. It's really easy to just grab them and go on the fly. But if the fish start getting picky, that's where you need to pay attention and you need to start making some adjustments. And I've been making a lot of adjustments lately and I've come up with some new things. Thus why we're doing this video again after a couple of years. So tip number one is that switching from a Kitek to a rage swimmer will make a huge difference on the back of most swim jigs. The reason why is the rage swimmer is made of a more rigid plastic. So where a Kitek will just give you the tail kick, it's so soft that it has a great kick, but there's not enough mass to really make the bait move. The rage swimmer, especially as you get into the cooler months and that plastic gets stiffer in that colder water, it will get more aggressive and it'll start to rock that swim jig and give you good motion, meaning it'll work even better in the spring and the fall. Especially when you get up to the bigger sizes like a three quarter ounce California swim jig, which we throw a lot in the summertime. The three quarter ounce, you throw on that bigger rage swimmer, 
that's going to give it enough to get some rock and roll. Now you guys that have been with us forever, you know that we used to have a robo worm trailer that we threw all the time. That bait's not around anymore and that bait was incredible on the back of a swim jig. Ever since then, I have been looking and looking and looking for another option. Insert the D Walker. This is a river to sea bait that they put out this year. When it first came out, it didn't jump off the peg to me, but I saw it in the water. And when I saw it in the water, things started clicking in my head. I saw it working on an underspin and it looked really good. When I put it on the back of a swim jig, it came to life. See, it's, a, it's made of a very rigid plastic. See how little body roller is there? It's just the tail itself flopping over compared to a Kitek, which is just super floppy. The Kitek, like I said, doesn't have enough body there to make that bait move. So this little guy, you're gonna get a ton of tail kick back there. You're getting the look that you want, but that body itself is going to give you a bunch of roll. It's going to destabilize the bait. So as it's coming through the water, you're going to see that bait rolling back and forth. And then you're gonna get a bunch of body movement, which is gonna give you a very, now of course I'm exaggerating it with my hands, but it's going to give you a little head hunt, which causes that skirt to start flowing and moving and pulsing on its own. That is what you're looking for. So the Rage Swimmer does a good job of it. That little guy right there, that D Walker, does an amazing job of it. It comes in two sizes. This is the smaller of the two that I have on just a standard swim jig. You definitely want to throw the bigger size if you're throwing it on a California swim jig or other heavy wire swim jig. It will make all the difference in how that bait looks underwater and how much you're interacting with those fish and how many bites you are getting. Trust me, it makes a difference. So that out of the way, let's talk about the when, where, how. Now, a lot of people will also swim jig with crawdad profiles. I'm not really touching on that right now because it's a lot simpler. Uh, use more of a crawdad color, obviously, something like, something like this would work great. You put your favorite, like a green pumpkin or an orange or a brown, anything like that. Put your favorite jig trailer on it as long as it's a jig trailer that swims. So something like a Spicy Beaver by Reaction Innovations. That's a new bait by them. Uh, Zoom Z Craw, uh, Strike King Rage Bug. There are all sorts of good options that are going to kick well. And as long as you've got a good hard kicking trailer, a pack a chunk on the back of that jig, you're going to get the action that you're looking for and that's really all you need. It's a lot easier on the crawdad imitating end of it. So I'm just gonna breeze through that. The swim bait end of it is where 95% of the baits on the market don't make that, that jig move and work the way you want it to. You need to be really, really specific as you choose the bait so you get the right actions. Now where to throw the swim jig? Everywhere. If you've got grass, that's great. I love to fish it in, around, over, under, through grass beds. I throw a lighter weight swim jig to get in and around and over and under. And then I take my big heavy swim jig for busting straight through. So if you're on a fishery that doesn't get a lot of pressure, if you're on a pond or you're on a lake where there's just not a lot of bass guys, throw a lighter weight swim jig because it's one, it's easier on you. Two, it will come over the top of everything. They're unbelievably weedless. Don't mess with the weed guard at all, leave it. All you need is a stout enough rod that when you hit them, you can push that weed guard down and put the hook in them. As long as you've got that, you'll be set. Almost any trailer is going to keep that jig moving really well and the fish are going to come unglued for it. You can fish it over the tops of the grass. You can let it sink down, bump your way through the grass. If you don't have grass, you can skip it under docks really well. That lighter jig skips extremely well. You can throw it in and around wood, around riprap, anywhere you wanna throw it, and those fish will just come out and get it. There's enough secondary action there that it fools them really well. You can imitate a shad. 
you can imitate a bluegill. All you do is change the trailer color. So shad, you might go with an electric shad. Want to imitate a bluegill? Take a bluegill type color to start, add a goby on the back of it, or add a chartreuse blue on the back of it. You've got your bluegill, it's that easy. But if you're in a place where a lot of other guys are fishing, even if they're not throwing swim jigs, if they're fishing the grass beds or the docks, and they're, they're fishing it a lot too, then you wanna get more specific. That's when I go to that heavier jig. It's gonna be a little harder to skip it. You're gonna need a more specialized rod because your hook's a lot bigger. You've got a lot more weight, so it's easier for a fish to throw if you don't pin them. But the advantage is you can go where no one else can go. Everyone else, whether they're throwing a spinner bait, a chatter bait, a crank bait, a light swim jig, a topwater, anything, they're going to fish the edges or over the top of the grass. And that requires a fish to come out and get the bait. What we do with the heavy swim jig is we go in after them. So instead of trying to fish the lanes through the grass, the little clear water spots in between grass beds, you aim right for the thick stuff and you just plow that big heavy swim jig in there and when it starts to hang up, rip it free. When you rip it free, those fish come unglued and there's really nothing else that can fish through that really thick grass because nothing else is going to weigh enough and be weedless enough to bust through it. You need to put it on a heavy rod to do that. I'm typically using a 7.6 heavy or heavier. Sometimes I'll use a frog rod like a 7.3 extra heavy or a flipping stick, a 7.7 to a 7.11 extra heavy. You need stout gear for busting that grass, but you will find that a lot of fish that see baits zipping by on the outside of the grass all day long will come unglued when one of them comes right down the center of that grass. It's those same fish that are susceptible to a guy coming along punching, heavy flipping that grass because those fish don't want to come out, but when a guy punches down in there, then they react. Same thing with that swim jig. You're just getting a completely different look at a group of fish that get fished for less. Does that make sense? So the gear itself, something like a seven foot, seven foot two, seven foot three, medium heavy to heavy rod. A standard jig rod is great. A Texas rig rod is great. Those rods are gonna be perfect. You don't need super specialized gear. I prefer braid to leader. Some guys, of course, are gonna fish fluoro, but I would say with typical swim jig fishing, 12 to 15 pound line at a minimum. And then if you're gonna go grass busting, 20 pound or heavier, you can also fish just straight braid in that grass. It'll help you rip through that stuff. Then either 50 or 65 pound braid to plow through all that grass makes a huge difference. Uh, color wise, I keep it simple. I'm either trying to match a crawdad, a shad or general bait fish like this guy, or a bluegill. One of those three things. And the thing with a swim jig is you're getting enough movement and flash and vibration and everything else that I feel like as long as you get close, you can imitate a lot of things. That's why I said a bluegill type color with a goby trailer or a chartreuse blue they're completely different ends of the spectrum. One is a brown base, one's a chartreuse base, opposite ends of the spectrum. But when you pair them up with that jig, both are going to look enough like a bluegill to get eaten. So with a shad, anything in that white, blue, silver, black realm is going to do great. Now, of course, I have some favorites. So I'll link you my favorite colors in the jigs and the trailers down in the video description but really keep it simple. This is a technique that you can do with gear that you already own. You can even use jigs that you already own if you wanna just sample the technique, but if you're really going to get into it, especially if you're fishing around grass. If you're around docks or just throwing it down the shore, not as big of a deal, but if you're in grass, you need a swim jig jig. You need it to be a swim jig because they've got a pointed head and they'll divide that grass really well. They'll split that grass to make room for that swim bait coming through behind them. They're much 
better at coming through that stuff and your life will just be a lot easier. And then again, the hook style, compare these two. Standard wire to a California or heavy wire side by side. The jigs themselves, very, very similar, but one has more than twice as much hook inside of it. Just comes down to how big of a fish you think you're going to be interacting with. If I think I'm on a lake where I'm gonna be catching one to three pounders, I'm absolutely going with a standard jig. If I think I might get a five or a six pounder, I'm probably gonna stay with that standard jig anyway. But if I think that there's a shot that I'm gonna be catching a lot of those bigger fish, especially if I think I might get a shot at a monster, I'm going to a heavy wire swim jig with a little bit bigger trailer, a little bit bigger profile overall, and I'm gonna go bust through some grass and try and find that monster bass. Guys, swim jig fishing is fun and it's not difficult to do. Get the right trailer, don't mess around, pair it up with a jig, and then just chuck and wind. Don't worry about the hard work. Don't beat yourself to death shaking that rod. Just get the right trailer, it makes it so much easier. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Tim and I appreciate you. Do turn on your notifications. YouTube tends to turn off that little bell symbol. And then even though you're a subscriber, you won't get notified that there's a new video. There are three videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We appreciate you. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.